Hey, we got a different kind of Friday night show for you. This ought to be fun. Welcome into my state of mind. I am Dan York. You know, usually on a Friday night, we'll, uh, and every night, weeknight, 7.30, repeating at 11.30. And if you missed the program, you can go on WPRI.com after our initial broadcast at 7.30 every night. The show is online for you to use, to tweet out, to post on Facebook, to do all of those things. And by the way, you can also find links on Twitter at Dan York Show, Y-O-R-K-E, and Facebook, Dan York Show, Y-O-R-K-E. Kind of neat the way we have both of those going on. Uh, but uh, we're going to skip the rundown tonight. This is an original program for Friday. What date is today? This will be the 25th of July. But um, a couple of weeks back, we uh, had a chance to talk with Brendan Kirby, who is the new guy on the road show. He's a funny guy. I met him back when he was doing cable access television, and I've always been a fan. So we're going to run that conversation. It's nice to get a little break from the politics and all the candidates and all the crises and all the controversies. So uh, tonight we're going to shoot the breeze with Brendan coming up here momentarily. And then after a couple of segments with Brendan, we're going to highlight some of the cool shows that we've done already this year that will take place next week on My State of Mind while I'm taking a little bit of a break at the beach, if that's okay with you. So with no further ado, I have a different shirt color because... Uh, it was a couple of weeks ago, my original updating conversation with Brendan Kirby. We just thought it'd be fun to revisit Mr. Kirby halfway through his big stint as the star of the ever-growing and popular road show. And here's some of the nonsense that goes on with <laughs> the cast. What's Michaela talking about there? Uh, probably the just how wonderful I've been doing really? as the new co-host. I mean, you can tell. I mean, look at the energy level. Look at this. It doesn't get much better than this, and uh, this is great. You know, Chris Maloney, you know him from Law and & Order, and doing fun satellite interviews. Yeah, I'm smashing, smashing that thing, guitars. I'm, I've really made my mark. How are you, sir? Good, brother. Thanks Good for having you. me. So, so wait, should I be honest? I've been pestering Jess to let me come back on the show. She finally acquiesced. Here I am, sir. It shouldn't require pestering. You know, I love you, so I think, uh, Thank you, I think you're funny. And I, you know, I get to watch the road show in happenstance. Okay. But every we'll time I it. tune in, it's uh, because as I'm getting ready for the radio and blah, 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 everyone's got different work schedules. Picking out the button down I'm for sure the day. now everybody on the road show will mention, you know, I get to watch the fat guy on <laughs> Meyer ITV every once in a while. But, yeah. Um, I knew you'd have fun. Yeah. And you've been having a lot of fun. Yes. We, we're, we're living life. We're, we're having fun. We're doing it all on that show. By the way, I'm very distracted by the beautiful view. You know how hard it is to focus on you, as I said last time? Set? The stunning view of Providence it behind it you. It is incredible. It's spectacular. Now, this is really an exciting day because not only did we have the road show earlier. I hope you looked in the right angle when you went. Oh, I clearly did. did. Okay. I did my homework. Yeah. Um, not only did we have, maybe I didn't. There's no city of Providence there. Now, now we it's had all in your it's imagination. An <laughs> so earlier today we had the road show, of course, uh, weekday mornings, 9 a.m. WPRI 12. Love doing it, of course. So we had that taping earlier today. Now tonight we've got this, the big Dan York State of Mind show. This is exciting for me because now I have the opportunity to ruin not one <laughs> but two shows in the same day. Dan doesn't get much better than that, my friend. What's uh, what's it been like for you? It's been great, you know. Um, you left Rhode Island, you went to California, and I you did. came back when we last left the story, and you, you won the contest to, yeah. to get the gig. And um, I've always thought that, uh, you know, you're going to be you're gonna be a TV guy one way or the other, so uh, this is uh, natural for them to pick you for sure. this. What's it like being a member of the crew? It's great. The team, you know, I think what's so great about it is the fact that it's been on a while now. I think this is, you know, season six of the road show. And it's such a, a well-run show. You know, they have an established audience. Of course, we're continuing to grow that audience every day with the fun things that we're doing. But um, to come into a situation like this, especially when you're the new person, is difficult because they had an established team. Will and Michaela are phenomenal, of course. And, you know, when you have a long-running sort of team or, or show, it's always interesting when the new person comes in and you know you hope that the audience will be welcoming of you that they will accept you and so far they have been so I really want to give a shout out to the viewers out there for being so welcoming to me and it's just been fun I'm getting to do so many things I mean we'll, we'll see I think later on maybe some of the fun things I'm getting to do well we'd have to wait till later team. on let's just uh, throw it right here. now I'll Lucy go see and we have clips Jess what fun things do we have to see what Brendan's been doing <laughs> out there the band oh the band uh, yeah you rock and rolling rock let me see what we got here now show me our 
buddy over there was nice enough to, Sean was nice enough to have us in and to teach us. And these are the type of things that we're bringing to the viewers out there, you know. By the way, I'm officially wearing makeup. Will and I, yeah. Will Gilbert and I are putting our makeup on together. Really? In the morning, before I go on, it's, it's, a, it's a bonding thing. It's very bonding. I, I wait till he goes in the makeup room. You know who room. I see in the makeup room most Who's of the time? <laughs> I, I, Tony Petrarca. Tony Petrarca. Sure. Poor guy, because then I have to ask a question about the weather. <laughs> Since every other idiot in the world does, I might as well do it too. Poor guy. Could you imagine being Tony Petrarca? No, I could not. And having to deal with no matter who you see first <laughs> right. during the day, that someone's going to ask either about, thank him for the weather. <laughs> Hold them responsible for the weather, or of course the inevitable question: How is the weather going That's to be right. for me? And he takes it with a spirit that is just there's incredible. nobody like him. And when I see, you know, Michelle Muscatello, you know, T.J. Del Santo, Tony, I try so hard not to ask them about the weather. I don't want to be really? you. I don't want to. You want to be the cliche <laughs> idiot that no. asks the questions all the time? I do not. And Monte Cabo and I actually uh, will powder our nose together from <laughs> time to time. So. You're not the only one who's double teaming in the makeup room. Yeah, are you powdering his and he's powdering yours? Is that yeah, how well, we haven't gotten that intimate yet. Are you at that advanced stage with Will at this point? We've come a long way Touching together. Touching up each other's noses. By, boy, the way, by the way, That's this beautiful. is a beautiful piece. You can't beat those tag sales. Things it's a nice table you got things here. Things you didn't know about it's the secret. road show. Will and Brendan together. Together. It's a bonding experience, mm -hmm. like you said, because when I wake up, it's like the, uh, what, what is the, um, the famous? Is it Nick, the Nick Nolte mugshot? That's pretty much how I look in the mornings. I, I think we've hit the TMI point we have? in this particular show. When I don't we, think we have. When we come back, we'll show you more ridiculous stuff. Stay with us. Brendan was learning how to stand on his board and not setting any land speed record. You think maybe I should slow down? I think I'm going to try some jumps. Follow me. That's what I call a great day. And watch you sit now. Is that how the Olympians get started? They get to do those things into a big... I, I've always wondered, actually. Yeah. Did you ask that question? How the, the, the real athletes who do that stuff actually start to practice that stuff? Because how do you... See, one of the mysteries of life have just been resolved for me. There's a big cushion yeah. that you can... That's right. Fall into. Fall into our when you're trying to practice your stuff. At several points, our knees have touched under this table. Yeah. I think I should point that out to the viewers out there. So <sighs> if we could just back it up a little bit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I had never snowboarded before in my life. That's one of the cool things I've gotten to do. You know, we, we go on these adventures. Will and Michaela, you know, took a ski lesson. I took a snowboarding lesson. And as you can see, I picked it up rather quickly. I think you're, you were very impressed with how fast mm. I picked it up, weren't you? It's good stuff. And I've tried to bring some uh, some new marketing ideas, if you will, to the road show. You really? know, you know what there are t-shirts, everyone, we've got t-shirts, but on the heels of this just brutal, nasty, ugly, frigid winter we had, it, every day was sub-zero temperatures. You know, I developed a little something I believe we have. I, I, it's the road show Snuggie. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. A more horrific image I cannot think of. But there you go. Look for it on a store shelf nowhere near you. <laughs> I bet you could sell those if you wanted to. I know. That's just me being me. And, uh, you know, what can I tell you? Was that like a real picture? Was that like, <laughs> was that, was that a real picture? Uh, it was a real photo, but, uh, you know, my head. It on. looks like. Look at my nails. That is, those are some oh, that good is looking a, that nails. Oh, that is a fake picture. <laughs> I can see now. I, I, I can't see anything anymore unless my glasses are on. I'm thinking, did he really put that thing on? No, he pulled that off. Okay. All right, that's enough. All I think right. we made the entire that's Photoshop. sick, ladies and gentlemen. That's Photoshop. <laughs> but right? it's fun, and it's, it's a fun show. We want everyone to check us out. Now, look, mornings. you love to do the stand-up thing. I do. Have you been doing any comedy around? You know what? Fan funny you would ask that, Dan. Fancy you would ask that question. A lot of the fun things I'm doing as you know, a co-host co of the Roadshow is people are asking me to MC different events. And you know, I had the old show, Wicked Late, where I would come out and I would do a joke monologue. And a lot of times we'd have comedians on that old show. And they would all say to me, you know, you should try stand-up. And I thought, ah, you know, I'm, I'm safe here in the studio. I don't know. You guys are the professionals. But a good friend of mine, Ace Aceto, longtime comedian here in Rhode Island, very funny. He was nominated as the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society Man of the Year for this year. They do that big campaign each year. 
And uh, one of his big fundraising events was a, uh, uh, a stand-up comedy show, and he asked me to host it. I was the dealer. It was Asusito's Royal Flush, and we had a joker, a king, a queen, a jack. And I was the dealer, so I hosted it. And it was a good way for me to kind of get out there in front of the audience. It different was a gig. Beautiful park theater. Yeah, very different. And I had a blast with it. And I, I heard the laugh, so I think I did OK. Yeah, well, you, I mean, the, you know, if you never saw <laughs> Wicked Lady, it was the best cable access show I've, I've ever seen. It was, really, it was that good. It was very, you put a lot of work into it. Uh, and you then, were a two-time guest. And, yeah, and then the, st and the stand-up stuff was very Letterman-ish yeah. in, in, in its nature. So what are you, what are you thinking as, as a student of all of this late-night yeah. television? What do you think of all the late-night changes? It's, you know, it really, I, you know how much I love Letterman. I was an intern there. I love, he's the reason I got into all this stuff. But you really are seeing a shift. No longer is it about the show. His show is great. All the shows are great. It is now all about the viral clip. How viral can this bit take us online and you really are seeing that between you know these uh, you know whether it's you know Kimmel or uh, Fallon and the Jimmies of course whose viral video is going the furthest 10 million hits 15 million hits and you can kind of see the time passing and Dave is sort of I, I don't think he really has the energy anymore I mean he's closing in on 70 I right. still think pound for pound he's hysterical I mean he's quick he's as fast as anyone faster than all of them I think and more qu and better you know quick-witted more quick-witted if you will than any of them but I think he realizes 30 plus years why you well, know, the it's kids. Well, it is actually actually there's a kind of there's a great conversation to be had here because uh, 50 something <coughs> like me have an expectation of a you know uh, you know a monologue that's funny and bitty but you know within the context of his standing up looking at me that's humor. Right. These new sh the programs I actually find myself working as a viewer. That the humor for me is like, and listen, I'm a Jimmy Fallon fan, I'm a Saturday Night Live fan, so right. I'm a bit and, and skit type of guy. Right. But in that framework, it's almost like, okay, here we go. More right. work for me as a viewer. But now I see what you're saying. It's like, get something that can go elsewhere other than this platform, because in the digital world, everything is multi platform, right? It, exactly. And, it and seems, that's how they win. It's not really about the interview anymore. It's what stunt are we going to do with the guest, which is great. But it seems that's really what it's all about now. And, I, and I'm glad. I think that gets exhausting, that's doesn't it? The thing. It's got to be tough for the writers. I mean, they're coming up with gems. But it's, you know, OK, well, Tom Hanks is here. What are we going to do with him? Are we going to do beer pong with him? Like, what are we going to do? And to me, you're losing a little bit of that conversational you know, aspect that you and I are having here so, mm. so eloquently, I must say. But just tells me I have to ask you about what? What do I have to ask him about? <laughs> this is a pa great rehearsal, by the way. Paper <laughs> Well, she's in my ear, but I'm not, you know, I, I don't play around here. Too. Yeah, oh, we had one of the Harlem... Ask him about the paper tossing. The paper tossing. Hey, hey what are you, what's going on with the paper tossing? Oh, funny you would ask yeah. that, Dan. The, um, just kidding. We had one of the Harlem Globetrotters. There he is. Uh, Dizzy Grant, I believe, was his name. The Globetrotters were in town. Uh, Michaela had a shoulder Dude, you injury. look very skinny. So I, st I know. It's, I'm emaciated, but can I challenged him. Uh, can then we I had introduce the you to a couple of my dumbbells? <laughs> I think I may need Good. oh some of your guests no, no. oh but I'm ping just boom, kidding boom, boom, but uh, I, there's yeah, a nice boom. air ball for you and I was disgusted with the results you certainly were I was but uh, it's a lot of fun we're doing things like that and, and and hopefully the audience continues to respond they've been so nice and we're growing and we want people all right to check so us the out. rules of the road show are a one year stint for you guys that the people that roll in and roll out is yeah. that uh, are you are you uh, going to be disappointed at the end of the year if they uh, kick your booty out or what's the story are you that? looking for a co-host by any chance i see a second seat over there <laughs> no um we're halfway through right now. Um, it's summertime here, and uh, my plan is to just keep showing up in January. I'm just even if I'm just not leaving. I'm just going to keep showing up to the building. You know, I think that's a good strategy. Oh. I'm never going to leave the building. Yeah. We just got to install a shower somewhere in and this perhaps facility. Perhaps you should not have telegraphed that strategy. <laughs> perhaps you just uh, should have done it. Just should have done it. As opposed yeah. to now, it's on the uh, record. We can't air this. Guess what? Uh, Kirby's we, not leaving. We can't air this um, show. Security. By the way, Security. I, I like what's going on on this show because I watch it and I, 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 tr I, I try to follow what's going on in the news. It helps me. I'm not any smarter, but it makes me feel a little bit smarter. <laughs> I, I, but I'm being honest, and I, you know how I feel about you, and I'm, I'm giving it a try. <laughs> All right, well, listen, come January, we'll check in on you again. I would love that. We'll make sure that uh, we keep you safe, at least, as you just keep showing up. Thank you for your support. Thanks work. for having me. I'm in the two-timers club now. Yes, you are. I love it. The Roadshow, weekdays at 9 on WPRI 12. If you're not watching, I'm coming for you. Tell Nothing will happen, but I'm coming for you. Tell them we'll be right back. And, uh, oh, I believe we'll be back right after this.
Brendan's always fun, um, and he's a real pleasure on the road show, no doubt. Listen, when we come back, a preview of some really cool shows that will air next week. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back on this Friday night. So we're going to take a little week off next week for live original programming here on Dan York State of Mind. But we've got some great shows that we've already done uh, that I think you're uh, going to take uh, an interest in, no doubt. And so let me highlight them for you so you can make some notes. On, on Monday night, we've got a very provocative conversation with Annie Russell, who heads up the LBGQ, LBGQT Center at URI. We had a very intense conversation about some of these um, orientation issues and the definition of a tough word. So historically, right, they're like the word queer. They're words that have been used to oppress uh, different members of different communities. Queer is probably the best example of a word that as a community, right, as an academic community with queer theory and queer studies uh, and as a larger kind of movement is a word that a lot of people feel comfortable with. But it doesn't mean that everyone does and it doesn't mean that everyone personally identifies with it. We have a number of students, faculty and staff who do not personally identify with that word. You may have difficulty identifying, well, I, you'll identify with the conversation. It may not be comfortable, but it's definitely a learning lesson, so check in Monday night. On Tuesday, Dr. Skip Spiokla, who wrote a book called From Harvard to Hell. It is uh, a kind of a revealing story of a doctor's battle with addiction. Most people that I know who drink a lot will hang on to, they won't try to stop because they really do enjoy the escape that comes when they drink. And um, clearly, uh, as time goes on, you develop a higher and higher tolerance, which requires you to drink just to calm yourself down. Okay. I had always drunk too much, but I'd never gotten in trouble for it. Never had a problem, never had drunk driving, although God knows I drove drunk many times. I, I never hurt anybody. I was never arrested for drunk driving. What happened was I'm an addict in everything. You know, there was a pretty, that was a pretty compelling conversation because we talked about the opiate the problem. Uh, that we've got here in southern New England right now and the numbers which have really grown and just been uncomfortable to see and his reaction to that and the kinds of things that ought to be done uh, about that. So that's a Tuesday program. Coming up on Wednesday, Dr. Roberta Mudge Humble returns, the author, the historian, the English professor at our local college at CCRI. She loves to have fun and she flipped us uh, one night uh, earlier this year uh, it was during the holidays, I believe, when we were uh, kind of selling her Rhode Island trivia game. Now, the last person you want in a trivia game is me. A lot of people think, oh, Dan, you're on the air. You research all this stuff. You might I am terrible in trivia. And I proved it. With us today is Maria Tavarosi, uh, who will compete against Dan York. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's see if we can go here. Okay. You've both seen this? Okay. I've seen that. Now, when it says my, it means the thing in the picture. Okay. Uh -huh. My city of residence. Providence. Providence. Okay. We'll give you what both one for okay. that. Are we, are we competing? Like, yeah, like yeah, first sure. one yeah. in? Is okay. this a team? Yeah. All right. We're competing. Here we go. First one in. You might have to raise your hand or something. Okay. To be honest with you, that was a total mess, but it was a fun mess. And uh, make sure you watch the Wednesday program because. Uh, Roberta is terrific, and she loves Rhode Island, and through all of the stuff that she writes and all of the things that she produces, like these games, the, the, the history and the essence of Rhode Island uh, comes through. She's a, a real, I think, uh, uh, jewel uh, for the state, no doubt. And on the Thursday program, we, got about, uh, we do a lot of entrepreneurial stuff here, uh, especially when we get a chance to uh, expand in our evergreen programs, as we call them, where we have less rundown and more guest discussion. And Dan Bacher is one of those guys that really grabbed our attention. He's an entrepreneur who's developed some incredible technology for people with disabilities. Take a look. We developed a piece of software that will allow someone who is paralyzed from the neck down but can still control their head to actually control a computer. And so, see that little blue dot on the screen? Yeah. Um, as I talk, it's moving a little bit too, but I'm actually controlling it with my head movements. Oh. Are you hungry? Did you eat this morning? Are you hungry? What do you think? Always hungry. <laughs> well, we know. Good. I don't know why I came up with that question. Maybe it's more about me. But anyway, 
I think you'll be fascinated by his, uh, by his work and, and moved by it, no doubt. And then on Friday, take me out to the ball game. I'll always hang out with Mike Tamburo from the Paw Sox. I think that Paw Sox organization, McCoy Stadium, is the best family entertainment dollar you can invest. It is a great bang for your buck. And I was talking to him about, about all sorts of things, baseball, including the way guys make it to the majors these days. Is it still that double A is the quicker run to the majors? Used to be, right, that the double A guys would have a quicker shot, and that's where they're actually nurturing their future talent more so. How does that work? You know, I think there was a time that that became the vogue in the industry, but I think if you look at the Red Sox today, I mean, most of their prospects are at have to come through AAA. They don't. They, they don't rush guys from double A to the major leagues, and very few clubs do. Great stuff. There's, it's never a waste of time to be talking Paw Sox and Red Sox baseball. So if that's the lineup for next week, when we take a little break, when I come back, how you get in touch with the program on your state of mind. Don't go anywhere. So now that we've previewed what you'll see next week, I'll remind you on how you can feed back to our state of mind with your state of mind. Well, to my state of mind with your state of mind. You simply call us and uh, we air your voicemails at 228-1886. State of mind at MeyerITV.com is the email address. And of course, on Facebook and Twitter, it's the same logo at Dan York Show, Y O R K E, and uh, Facebook.com slash Dan York Show. And uh, if you're new to the broadcast, you know that, uh, you should know that you can engage the show at any time. The more, the merrier. Uh, so we'll be off for next week. You know, I don't know about you, but I've been on kind of a, oh, usually I take the two weeks ago prior. Um, so a little off balance, but I'm ready to take a break and we'll come back for the following Monday and get right back into it in the heat of the political season and more. Thanks so much for watching My State of Mind. I'm going to the beach, but enjoy the shows next week. Have a great weekend. Good night.